Let's get started with magnetism manipulation. Another one of the most popular abilities ever created based off a real world concept Users of magnokinesis can manipulate magnetism and magnetic fields. <laughs> now, most people have heard of magnetism, but few know of its technical effects, you know, how it actually works. So for those that need a refresher and like to get pissed off that I do this, magnetism is a physical phenomenon produced by the motion of an electric charge resulting in attractive and repulsive forces between objects. The user can control the strength of magnetic fields. They can transform a magnetic field strength into a more potent or a weaker version than what existed before. <laughs> the user can also manipulate civilian cars, telephone poles, phones, computers, planes, roads, bridges, house, buildings, etc. Basically, any object that possesses any metal is influenced by magnetism in one way or the other. And through precise magnetism manipulation, it is possible for the user to simulate telekinesis, although this is usually limited to metal line and or magnetic materials. But in addition to that, the user can levitate and transform objects into projectiles through the magnetic force they create or manipulate. They can demolish anything that makes contact with the magnetic field that they control or manipulate. They can use this power to shift or move massive metallic objects and split them apart into fine ferromagnetic properties, which can then give atomic levels of control over an object, basically meaning they can use magnetism at the atomic level, which, you know, affects atoms and electrons and whatnot. But it doesn't stop there. They can also generate magnetic blasts that attracts metals or repel them through these magnetic blasts with massive force. They can also construct weapons out of metal, organisms out of metal, <laughs> minions out of metal, and various other structures from magnetic energy. The user can even control magnetism on a planetary scale, which includes attracting and manipulating space stations all the way to gathering metallic enriched asteroids near the Earth to simulate a meteor shower. Or if the user is proficient enough, they can just straight up control the geomagnetism emitted by the planet that they reside on. So with that static field of information messing up your hair, I'm gonna let you guys know that this video may or may not grant insight into controlling magnetic fluctuations and whatnot. Beware of random headaches and nosebleeds or loss of vision because too much of this wonderful thing is, well, not so much of a wonderful thing. So in order to build up that much needed immunity, do the Shay a favor and hit that like and subscribe button because all the answers you're looking for exist in this video. But if you get off on attracting cars or sticking to trains against your will, then at least do me a favor and hit that share button so others who are suffering memory loss from magnetism can figure out how to counter its effects and be the better person for it. But if you don't think any of that's necessary and you guys are ready to get positive, <laughs> then look north and uh, something pull something magnets. Clever, clever, whatever. The origins of magnetism was first discovered in the ancient world when people noticed that lodestones, which are naturally magnetized pieces of the uh, mineral magnetite, could attract iron. <laughs> this simple force of attraction was found and used in nearly every culture on this planet, ranging from uh, scientific discussions in Greece all the way to India, who were documented in their use of magnetite to remove arrows embedded in a person's body. Or the Chinese, who were known to use the... Uh, lodestone compass for a form of navigation. But this also reaches all the way up to England and the Middle East where magnets and their properties were expanded upon, which led to the discovery of magnetic fields, magnetic charges, and magnetic poles, which itself led to the large revelation that the Earth itself operates like a giant magnet. But the history or origins of magnetism, just like the most fundamental or elemental forces, goes back to the beginning beginning of the universe, where the simple movement of electric charges or electrons, which were found in everyday atoms, generate a magnetic field around said atom. But in legends and mythology, as far as I could find, state that the concept of a magnet is derived from the legend of Magnus. And I think that legend comes from the territory of Magnesia, which was just a city in Greece. But anyway, the titular character of Magnus the shepherd discovered the concept while carrying a message over a mountain. In some legends, it's Mount Ida, and in others, it's a mountain in India. But the myth states that he felt his feet clinging to the earth and to the iron ore on the hill, which in some translations was referred to as lodestones or magnetite. 
Okay, there was a little more to the origins of magnetism than I thought, but I guess you can consider that brief spiel a summary of the possible origins of this power. Now let's get the common sense stuff out the way when it comes to magnets and magnetism. Yes, most if not all forms of magnetism are due to or caused by an electric current, meaning that electricity and magnetism go hand in hand. Yes, magnetic fields operate on what we call a negative and positive charge. So that's where we get the uh, north and south pole of a magnet dynamic thing. And yes, the magnetic behavior of a material depends on its structure, particularly its electron configuration, which simply means that certain things are more magnetic than others because of how they're structured or how they're created originally. Magnetism is such a universal consistency and necessity that it makes up half of a fundamental force. <laughs> you know, the electromagnetism aspect of the fundamental forces. And while these two are very similar, I'm going to strictly stick to the magnetic aspect without spoiling too much about the other if I can. But anyway, when it comes to the concept of magnetism, this attractive force performs a prominent role within the process of electromagnetism, and its effects are commonly demonstrated with ferromagnetic materials, which is simply matter that forms magnets or objects that are attracted to magnets. You'll mostly find that everyday metals are attracted or influenced by electric fields in one way or another, such as iron, cobalt, nickel, and other alloys created from the mixture of the previously mentioned. And these magnetic fields that surround magnets and or conductors of electrical energy can carry a distinct electric current or stream of charged particles which interact with other charged particles which in turn are responsible for the magnetic attraction effect that we all know and love. This is why you get the positive to negative attraction in magnets or the uh, negative to negative or positive to positive repulsion. I hope that was easy to understand. So with that being said, it's safe to say that magnetism is found everywhere, especially in our modern society. From basic television to doors, electronic locks, compasses, GPSs, computer chips, electrical equipment, weapons, and yes, even a lightning strike. More often than not, the combination of how electric currents or signals travels from one charge to the next determines the particular magnetic effect and its strength and properties. And to my knowledge, there are at least five types of magnetism. Nah, I won't be getting into those in this video. If you guys want me to do videos on those different types, then let me know in the comment section. But anyway, the magnetic aspect, or <laughs> I guess magnetism itself, can be interfered with by temperature basically meaning that higher temperatures interfere with magnetic fields and lower temperatures stabilize them. So as a concept so ingrained in our world as an attractive force, because that's what it is, it has to have an esoteric meaning to it, right? And you would be right because symbolically, magnetism, or the magnet, I guess, simply represents a form of attraction. And this bare bones concept can apply to anything that people feel strongly attracted to such as someone or something that has the unnatural ability to <laughs> attract others towards it. In terms of people, this represents someone that is a uh, magnetic, which is an idiom meant to mean that they're charismatic. More examples of the esoteric being terms such as a uh, chick magnet, you know, someone who's popular with the fair sex to the point of excess oftentimes. Or trouble or shit magnet, which refers to someone who for a completely unexplainable reason attracts bad things or events that happen to them, which is also referred to as having bad luck. But I think you guys see the point. But getting back into this concept as a superpower, users of this ability range the gauntlet from being overpowered blokes who don't have to lift their finger to attack you as they normally use their control over magnetic fields to tear you apart all the way to those who are literally magnetic with metal just sticking to them wherever they go. But all in all, you will need a heavy imagination to not get bored with this ability because unfortunately, real world depictions of this ability are not as all as powerful as the way superpowers portray them in popular culture. Sometimes characters with these powers will be fully electromagnetic and can manipulate electricity as well. But that stretches into electromagnetism, which is way broader than just simple magnetism or electricity because they can do things with electromagnetism that dip into a uh, plasma, light and radiation control. But we're not going to talk about that now because depending on how much the user of this power knows about the science of magnetism, electromagnetism could be given to them, which could allow them to manipulate other aspects of nature, such as bending light or being able to disassemble the very atoms that make up an object. But unless you have some kind of a background knowledge on basic science, 
you're not going to get very far with magnetism, let alone electromagnetism. Stats for a user of this power do range, but we can say medium to high levels of attack power because magnetic fields are pretty strong, medium to high levels of defense because magnetic repulsion is pretty dang strong, high levels of speed because magnetic fields operate at relative speeds, which means speeds that are fractions of the speed of light, like 1% the speed of light or something like that, and immense versatility. Common colors associated with magnetism range immensely, so there really are no set color schemes or themes behind this power. But if I had to choose something to help you guys out, I would say red for a positive charge and blue for a negative charge. But to be honest with you, any color would do. So expect to see the obvious horseshoe magnet shape or the cylindrical magnet bar like shape that'll have, you know, magnetic field lines emitting from it. Lines themselves will normally be concentric circles around the current carrying conductor. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. But if you really want to keep it simple, then you might even see someone with the plus or minus sign or the N or S, you know, for North and South Pole, respectively. You'll also see depictions of arrows to show the direction of the positive and negative charge. And if you really want to hammer the point home, then just forget about all the complicated stuff and just show the user manipulating a form of electricity or something like that. But expect users of this ability to be portrayed as arrogant and or extremely haughty and manipulative at their worst or smothering friendly but still manipulative at their best. They will normally have an unnatural level of charisma to them that at its least effective will keep them out of trouble and at its most effective will turn anyone to their side. But oddly enough, because of the magnet's predictable properties, you know, attraction and repulsion, most of the time a user of this power will share in said uh, predictable personality, oftentimes being classified as a one track mind kind of person, or they'll share a level of stubbornness that'll border on insanity in extreme cases. And due to the extreme effects of magnetism on the brain, a character might just straight up be insane because electrical signals operate within the brain and magnetism obviously manipulates electricity. But this is only in extreme cases. And speaking of things that are extreme, that's where part one of this video ends. Yeah, I know, just when it was getting good. So don't get upset, just chill out and join me for part two as we get into the applications, users, and uses for this power. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you nerd or nerdettes in the next one. Well, part two.